Hello everyone, welcome to Army Finishing School. Uh, my name is Shivdeep. I will be your mentor for the program and I'll take you to the entire online demo for uh, financial modeling. Now, in, at RBM, we have uh, basically divided financial modeling into three parts. So what we say here is one, two, and three. Part one, we will be calling it as data inputting and formula input. In part two, we will call this as projection and part three would be valuation. As we know, financial modeling is making a model based on the financials or the past financials of a company. Now, till these two stages, model is nearly same for whatever your purpose is. For example, I can make this model to value a security, value a bankruptcy firm, value for uh, you know any of the businesses which is uh, trying some companies trying to buy or sell m a kind of a thing. So here our purpose is to make a financial model to value a security. Security is basically stock. So what do we mean by that? Why valuing a security am I trying to find out the fundamental value of the company based on the projections that we are doing? So in summarized form, financial modeling equity valuation is finding the fundamental value of equity by projecting its future values and discounting them back to the present value. So this entire thing we'll be doing in Excel. I'll show you the model uh, in about a minute or so. So here we'll start with data inputting. We'll pick up the data from different sources. Then we'll put our formulas. Why do we need to put our formulas? Because source give you only the values. They do not give you the formulas. Then we'll move into the projection. Projection is projecting the financials for next five years, 10 years, 15 years. The ideal is five years. Now we'll decide on parameters. What parameters can we project the financials? Once the projection is done, we'll move towards valuation. Here we will be applying a DCF, a DDM, relative valuation, and residual valuation. In DCF, we'll be looking both at FCFF and FCFE. In meantime, while calculating things, we'll be making up a schedulers and I'll take you to the, all the schedulers. Let me now take you to the Excel of this. So we'll start off from here. As I already have uh, discussed with you this, so this is here, this is basically the data inputting stage. We'll be picking up data from different financials companies. Uh, data source could be uh, money control, could be Factiva, whatever data source we are working upon. Then we'll be putting industry data. This is for the basically for the comparison between my company and what industry is doing. Then we'll prepare the common size. This is stage one. Then we'll decide on the projection variables. We'll project income statement, balance sheet and cash flow. And then we'll prepare the schedulers, schedulers for income statement, schedulers for balance sheet, and then apply the valuation model. How do we go about it? First, we'll pick up the data. Now, this is data has been picked up for one of the free data sources. As you can see, this is picked and pasted here. So this is the complete data, the complete uh, PNL statement. This is balance sheet. From this, we'll develop our own income statement by copying this or using a reference to get the values here. And then we will put our formulas. Since these forms, if you can see here, the formulas were not uh, mentioned here. So to make it consistent, now financial modeling, every data should be consistent. If I say net sales is sales minus excise duty, this should follow everywhere in my company as well as in my industry. So maintaining a consistency is one of the most important parameters here. Please remember, we are making this model after a qualified auditor has Call, you know, check the financials and sign it across. So we'll take the same financials and work towards it. Once done, then we'll try and 
will make the balance sheet, the cash flow. Cash flow statement will not be manually entering anything. We will be all derivative of a income statement and balance sheet. Then we'll move to developing of the common size. We'll develop the common size for income statement as, of, as well as for the balance sheet. Now coming back to income, then we'll move to projection variables. We'll decide on what projection variables should I choose. Now the projection variables could be anything ranging from Excel inbuilt functions like a forecast or a growth or something like a minimum or something from an EIC analysis, economic industry company analysis. So regression what you see here is a derivative of an EIC analysis. I'll talk about this little later. So then what we'll see, you can see this is there is a drop down box which contains everything, every parameters. Now I have around five, seven parameters. You can have 10, 15, 20, whatever number of parameters you like. And as in when I change this parameter, the entire income statement change. The same thing will happen in the entire model till the valuation, everything will change. So my model will be highly dynamic in nature and I'll have control in each and every item. Item in the sense, each and every uh, entity that is reflecting an income statement balance sheet, I will have an option to edit it and manipulate it as per what I have projected towards the company. Now moving to balance sheet, we'll project the balance sheet in a similar way. We'll project the cash flows, then we'll move to the common size. Here you can see we have made the schedulers for everything. You have an asset scheduler, debt scheduling, loan scheduling, interest scheduling, depreciation scheduling. Then you have preference dividend, dividend, scheduling basically. We have calculated weighted average cost of capital. We'll talk about this a little later. Then you can see CAPM is there. That is to find the cost of equity. DCF, FCFE and FCFF. Then moving to industry dump, we'll have made a dump for the industry where we have picked up statements for industry. Then we'll move to income industry income statement, make industry balance sheet. Now why are we making this? We make industry because we need to have the consistency running everywhere in the formulas and everything. Then we will calculate beta as you must have studied during your CFA program. One way is covariance of IM upon variance of market. The second one is this is beta by the covariance method. And this is the beta which is calculated as a slope of security market line. So what we have done is we have taken the Sensex closing or index closing, stock closing, got their percentages changes, changes and applied a formula to arrive at the beta. If you look at this, this is a covariance and this is a slope. So in both ways you can find the beta. Moving to the next part, this is regression analysis. Now why do we do a regression? Because we need to focus on EIC, economy, industry, company analysis. In economy, we would be tracking Indian economy. Industry, we will, you can choose your industry. One, I'll make model together. Second, I'll give you a chance to make the model. If you have any doubts in making the model, you can always get back to us. We can solve your queries on this. Then from industry, we'll choose our company. So the numbers that you see here for industry for 2014, this, these are all derived from GDP. This is projection taken from IMF. And from this, we have derived these figures. So from industry, we will try and derive the company sales numbers. This would be an EIC analysis doing a regression. Now in regression, there are certain things that you see, a yellow mark or other things. So this I'll help you out and how do we get this regression analysis done in Excel. Once everything is done, we'll move to valuation. This is the valuation as per the dividend discount model. This is a valuation as a discounting of cash flow. If you see here, we have used FCFE, not FCFF. You can use FCFF also if FCFE is in some cases negative. Then this is the relative valuation. Relative valuation is basically a valuation using methods of comparables. This is where industry will come into picture. So we have uh, P by A, P by BV, price to sales, EV by beta and EV by bet. At the end you can see a economic value added method. This is also known as residual valuation. So what we'll do is we'll work on this uh, model and try and find the value of the security. Plus we'll be doing a ratio analysis. And once this is done, uh, I'll expect you to make a report. 
Because uh, if you look at Excel, people do not understand Excel. What they need is a final report that you see from the brokerage houses, and you can also compare the prices that you're getting from different various uh, sources, uh, different brokerage houses. Your price should be somewhere similar to whatever people are saying in the market. So Hero Motor Corp, this is present, uh, pre uh, prepared by one of the students from FATP, Deepesh Sharma. So this is how you will make, I'll give you the parameters on which to write this report, and you have to write it, submit it across. Plus, I'll show you the valuation report also. This is the valuation report of Sun Pharma. Made, this is all reports made by students. So this is the report, the current market price, target price, upside potential, holding period return, and everything. So this is how you will make your valuation report. So once the valuation report is done, your work is nearly done because then most of the part has been, would be uh, covered in this. So that's how the complete program is. The benefit of doing this uh, is one, you will uh, make dynamic model. In the sense, if you dump the data from the same data source here, everything else will change automatically. You do not have to worry about this. Second, you will learn valuation and you will learn to write report plus ratio analysis. So this is how the complete course is. And the prerequisite would be little knowledge on Excel. I do not want you to have an expert level knowledge because we will be covering Excel in detail. But elementary knowledge is basically required. I'll take you from the basics. The entire program will run from very basic. I'll not give you any template. This is a kind of template that you will make at the end of the program. You will be, should be able to do the valuation on your own. That's what the idea behind this entire program is. So that's uh, the end of it. Uh, what I'll do is once uh, if this presentation is done, I'll, I'll ask Ankita to schedule one-on-one. -on -one. If you have any doubt, please jot it down and uh, we can discuss uh, that in person. Thank you again for joining us. Have a great evening.